You think you've tried everything, but you've never really tried everything. You always think you've tried everything, but really you've never tried. You always think you've tried everything, but nobody in reality ever tried everything. In reality, everything is not something you can try, only things. You make do with only trying things. Then you make do with only trying some things, and then a few. Even when the things you try get you nowhere, and everything still has to be done. Everything remains to be done. Even when there is nothing to be done, then especially. But even in reality, trying the few things you do try feels like already having tried everything. But every time, or nearly, you try something, it also feels like, really, you're not trying. Because since you already tried everything, there is really nothing left to try. And every time you try, you get nowhere. But you never try. And then, when what you try comes to nothing, because in reality, you already tried everything, and there is nothing left to try, and you never try, the nothing that it comes to comes alive and grows into a new organ, like a second heart. Then you have two heartbeats that are syncopated in a kind of squeamish counterpoint, like acquainted squids, dry humping in a hoover bag full of egg whites, <laughs> synovial fluid, geese, more geese, more geese, Tizer, or sawdust one inch of which is a square, like an orphan's forehead, cut out of sandpaper, each of whose million grit particles is around 140 microns across, yet each can individually be felt. So each can individually be felt. The pulse galls like a squirgleting meringue. The beat riles like a squirgleting merocyte. Every time you try something that feels like not trying, Everything that remains to be done, when there is nothing to be done, can feel like it will always be there, unconditionally. Like a pair of lips in the sandpit that says, I alone will never leave you, everything can wait. And the tongue that ought to be there behind the pair of lips, so that those words can be said out loud, is never there. But somewhere else in the sandpit, burrowing in, looking for a bit of privacy where it can bring other tongues home and lick them in secret. <laughs> and anything you ever try will only ever be the same as everything you tried already coming back to life again. In reality, where the lips are for real but stuck at home, but the tongue is always off doing things in secret by itself. <laughs> and whose head ends up stuck between the teeth? <laughs> Every time you say, try something, it feels like saying, having tried everything and knowing nothing ever works, I might as well not be here. But every time it feels like having tried everything means nothing will ever work, it starts to dawn on you that maybe meaning could be scapegoated. And the thought deviates into view that while there will never be anything else but more of nothing, this need be true only in the sense that in reality, it is what being in reality means. And if meaning is going to be a fucking prick, it can get out of my face and do it elsewhere. <laughs> and if reality is nothing but a tautology, and being nothing but a tautology can get along well enough without you, then it can get along well enough without you for all I care. Because I put up with meaning's bullshit for long enough. <laughs> I've had it up to here. Ever since I was nothing, <laughs> I've tried it all, and now I want to live. <laughs> There's felt, a bee, squill, swaps, nylon, and other sundry items, such as basin tracks, keys, forts, spirals, volatility futures, lint, or eyes. <laughs> they multiply as you look in on them. Before long, there will not only be felt, 
a bee, squill, swaps, nylon, and other sundry items, <laughs> such as basin traps, keys, forts, spirals, volatility futures, lint, or eyes. <laughs> Soon there will also be geese <laughs> clamouring to be finger painted. And you will then have the unenviable job of telling the felt, bee, squill, swaps, nylon, and other sundry items, such as basin traps, keys, thoughts, spirals. <laughs> Volatility futures, lint, or eyes that you can't see them today. Something's come up. You will have to come up with an excuse on the spot, and it had better be good. So you say that Douglas Barrowman has come over, and something terrible has happened. He was coming down the stairs barefoot, and he trod on a wasp. His foot is punctured, you cry. Venom floods the soul. At first, he thought he trod on broken glass, then jerked his foot away and saw the half-crushed wasp still twitching on the fatal step. And more in horror than in pain, he screamed, then screamed again in pain, repulsive pain. He staggered off the stairs into the lounge, you cried. He clutched the table, standing on one leg. The stinger is still in his punctured foot. Go in and have a look. He'll show you it. He'll tell you that it has a meaning too. He'll say, but almost incoherently, because of the horrific pain he's in, it's death. Come to prognosticate the truth. You'll ask him to explain how he knows that. But he shall say, I tell you, I know not. Ye workers of iniquity, fuck off. And you'll forgive these rash, cruel, thoughtless words in light of all the pain that he is in. His pain would be unbearable elsewhere. The sight of pain like that is not allowed to vary like an object in the rays of multiple successive suns from here. In my foot, it would kill me every time. I'd be annihilated on the spot and all over again on every step. The pain he's in is too woeful for me. Undying pain is not for everyone. Dear basin trap, keys, thought, lint, eyes, and squill. We die from all the pain we cannot kill. Yet do not pity him whose foot that is. For Douglas Barrowman is made of tweed. <laughs> and tweed is full of holes that fill the eyes. And holes that fill the eyes are full of shit. And eyes are full of shit, now you are dead. They look at you and see you there as though you hadn't only now completely gone. And shitty eyes that milk the sight of you, still there, of the eternity of love, are bound to end up in an empty mess. For shit's no recompense for emptiness. Some emptiness is never recompensed. Some feet are meant to crush life out of wasps. Some souls are bred in time's captivity as meat for death that eats them into dust. But holes that fill the eyes are not a thing, and death will simply have to go without. It too can starve if I can now and then, defrauded of its object, emptiness. Once emptiness is traded down for void, and void, grown definite, becomes the void. And life begins again from there, with time, enfolded on itself, on fire with love that is allowed completely to burn out. Because even the void knows what to do, to make desire new and love its own. The void can never leave itself alone. The void and barrowman go hand in hand. Live multiplier, dead multiplicand. This amorous twosome is not to be confused, even in moonlight, with the great void barrowman, the ferryman, seen twice. You may be so drunk that you cannot see a single object, only double void. But that pair, orgying in PPE, is real. Though, though less than one half anthropoid. It's not void barrowman in duplicate. It is the void, and it's real life plus one. It augurs death. It cries, no use, too late, no time, returns or squill, no end, you're done. <laughs>